this scrap piece of wood, I just uh, squared it up on the uh, table saw, so I got all squ squared edges here. Uh, you have to turn the tenon on on one end. Uh, I'll choose this one, which will perfectly fit into the hole of the banjo where the tool rest is uh, sitting and normally sitting in. So I got my measurements and I go ahead and scribe a line across where the tenon should be, should end. I want to have a very crisp shoulder at this side here. Well, line to all four sides because I want to see this this line while the piece is rotating. <laughs> so I just put a tenon on here and see what I can what I come up with. Here we go, I just remove these sharp edges. So I get the overall height, I take the, the top of my uh, headstock, which is 30, uh, 23 centimeters. I'm going to mark this on there as well, as this will be the, the top of this whole thing. And I want to have something similar like this on this end. to my the banjo and it seats at the at the bottom of the banjo so I have to find the define the center height well now it's just a matter of lining finding the the height of your drive center and therefore I just take the square put it against the the piece of wood here and I just raise it until I barely touch the the tip of my drive center and well I can test fit that one on the starting it up and that's okay and I uh, just scribe the line on the back here I have to use the back because uh, the knob for uh, tightening, tightening this thing up here is well too far to the headstock so I can't get any closer so this is the line I just scribed and I, I scribed, uh, I extended it by going around the piece so I've got 
all four sides marked with the exact center height. Before I use them as uh, as the dead lines, I just make sure that these are exact at the place where I wanted to have them. Okay. Okay as well. The third. And the fourth one. So they are exact. So this is the exact height of my uh, drive center compared to the to the banjo down here. So this is what I got. So this is what I got now, and this is you can put that into the banjo and tighten it up so it will stay well, pretty stable at this position. So what I'm going to do now is I just drill. An eight millimeter, a ten millimeter hole through the uh, at this center uh, line at the height of the center line, just for well, then I can use that to drill straight through up to the center of the turned piece, and that's. What I wanted to. So let's get over to the drill press. So at the drill press, I start by marking the center of the of the piece, so I can and this on two sides. And I punch a hole. So this is the height of my drive center. And the center of this piece here. Start by drilling a hole on ten millimeter, the ten millimeter hole into this face, going all the way through. This drill press can't go all the way through, or I would have left a few millimeters. Uh, and I do need a backup board, I just back it up now. So the drill will meet the, will punch through at the backup board. is well this hole is perfect square to the to 
with the scrub line. So I have to just change the drill bit and do the same with the 8 millimeter hole. Because I said I wanted to have an 8 and a 10 millimeter. There's no need for, well, if there is a need for a smaller or a bigger one, uh, you might drill it. But as I'm not in need of these, I just want to use these two. I So the jig we build up over here is just a simple way to align your drill bit so you can drill a hole right through a spindle turned workpiece up to the center of the, of the piece. So they'll come out straight and you can adjust the, the angle from being um, 90 degrees to the turn axis to whatever angle you want to. For example, if you want to uh, build a chair and you want to drill in holes going on 30 degrees, you just set up this one here to 30 degrees to the to the face and uh, put it wherever you want to and then you can drill your holes on a on a circle because that one is a flat face you, you, you can drill them at any angle you want to and this just guides the drill bit through the wood and you get a very good alignment and uh, repetitivity for that one. I recommend not using a bread point pit uh, bit, just these uh, usual drill bits, because the bread point pit does damage to the guiding holes here, and you don't want to damage that one. So what I do now, just to improve it, I just chamfer the edges a little bit. For easy access, so just put on the slide chamfer to the to all of my my holes yeah so I'll start 
also the drill bits are entered more easy to the thing. If you need a longer hole here, you have to have a longer drill bit. That's it. Thank you for watching and, well, don't forget to subscribe.